Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at a third way to apply decals to an object, this time using multiple UV maps and a texture atlas. Let's get into it. For this tutorial, we're just going to use a simple cube to do our demonstration. To start off with, I'm going to add a basic PBR texture. To do that, I'm going to use the Node Wrangler add-on, which if you don't have enabled, it's really simple. Just go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, type in Node in the search, and check Node Wrangler. With just your principled BSDF node selected, press Control shift t This will bring up a file select menu. Here's a folder of images. I downloaded these from cc0textures.com, which you should definitely check out. I'm going to select all five images and click Principled Texture Setup. This is the basic setup that gets created for a PBR texture. And as you can see, our concrete texture has been applied to this cube pretty well. The default cube already has a UV map on it. So if I go over to UV editing, you'll see it's a basic T pattern. Now if I wanted to add in some decals, I could mix them in using the alpha channel of my decal file. Here's a simple file that I've created. I'll drag it in. I'm going to duplicate my principled BSDF node, attach my image to it, and then add a mix node between my two principled BSDF shaders. I could do that with Shift A, Shader, Mix Shader, and then connect the two. Or with Node Wrangler, I can press Control Shift, right click on one of my principled BSDF nodes, and then drag to the second one. It might seem a little complicated, but once you get used to that key combination, it makes adding mix shaders a whole lot simpler. As you can see, the texture's already being combined. However, the two are being combined equally, and I want them to be mutually exclusive. So I'll drag the alpha channel from my decal image over to my mix shader factor. I have gotten the opposite of what I was going for, so I either need to switch the two shader inputs or invert the alpha channel. I'm just gonna switch these two. There we go. Pressing Control T on this image will give me a mapping and a texture coordinates node mapped to the UVs. Of course, this is using the same UV coordinates as our concrete texture, and so the images aren't placed the way we'd like them. Let's see how we can change that. Going over to my UV editing tab, we can see how they're currently laid out. What I'm gonna do is under my object data properties, I'm gonna expand the UV maps tab. I'm gonna rename the base UV map as concrete. Then I'm gonna add a second UV map. This one, I'm gonna name decal. Over in my shading menu, I'm gonna replace this texture coordinates node with an input UV map node. This way, I can choose which UV map that I wanna use. Back over in my UV editing tab with my decal map selected, select this face, and now I can move this face in my UV editor to the decal that I want. You do see, we are getting the side of this decal because it's currently wrapping. We can adjust that by going back to the shading menu and changing our decal image from repeat to clip. I can repeat this process for other faces. Now, say I want this image to be very small. You'll see that it overlaps this decal here. In this case, I could add some more geometry to my cube, select these three faces, and then adjust the UV maps accordingly. So with a little lighting, there we go. That's looking pretty good. This gives us a painted on effect because we didn't affect the bump and displacement that was being created by the PBR texture. We can make one more adjustment if we want our labels to be smooth. Here's the displacement node that's feeding the material output. What we're gonna do is duplicate this node and then add a mix node between them. I'll use my Node Wrangler shortcut to do that. Control Shift, right click and drag. I'm gonna reuse the alpha from my decal file to drive this mix as well. I'll do a shift right click drag across this line to add a reroute node and then use that to drive my mix. Of course, just like before, the alpha is driving these two backwards. So I'm just gonna change their position. And now we have something that looks more like a sticker placed on the concrete rather than something painted onto the concrete. The choice is really up to you, depending on what style you're going for. Here I've applied the same material to a Suzanne. Of course, a Suzanne's a whole lot more complicated than a default cube, and we're not gonna have nice flat surfaces to project our decals onto. Here's where you wanna use your UV unwrapping tools to get the areas that you want. Now I did place a subsurf modifier on this Suzanne and then applied it. 
so it has a much higher poly count. I also added my decal UV map so that the shader would know what to do. With my decal UV map selected, I'm gonna select all the UVs and move them off of the decal map. Because we're in clip mode, this means that currently only empty space is under these UVs because we have transparency all the way around this image. Now say I wanted to put one of these decals on the top of Suzanne's head. I could select where I want it to go, press U, and then unwrap. I would simply need to do that. However, you will notice that there might be some distortion. One way we can help to minimize this is by using a different UV mapping tool. Here I'm going to choose Project from View. What this does is aligns the UV mapping exactly with the view that I'm currently looking at. So if I'm looking from this angle, it will be square. Of course, you'll get some stretching in other directions. So find the angle that works best for you and use that. I hope this third method for applying decals gives you some ideas and inspires you to make something awesome. Thanks for watching this one. If you're enjoying the channel, make sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, I'll catch you later.